welcome back to Always By Your Side. It's me, Gabriella and Elisa. Welcome back. I know for me it feels like a long time since I filmed because, I mean, it has been. I had stocked up quite a few podcast episodes, but I haven't filmed since. So it's been like a week and a half. Usually I film like two episodes in a week. So this episode is going up today. I have to edit this and go crazy with it for you guys to have it today because I'm a woman of my word, okay? You know? But so this episode is one that was super, super heavy on my heart. And I really wanted to film this episode. And I honestly, I'll be completely blunt and ob- honest, obvious, honest, and tell you guys like, I struggled so much filming this one because this is my third time filming this episode because I feel like it's such a heavy, important topic because this is the foundation of faith. This is the foundation of building a relationship with the Lord. So it's like, I want to make sure it's perfect for you guys. I don't want to like leave anything out that could be like, important or good or anything and I also had asked you guys to ask me questions about it so at the end of this we're going to go through a bunch of questions maybe some things that I missed because I just feel like this is so important and a lot of people have been asking me about it like my dms and my comments are flooded with like how do I get close with the lord and I'm like I just feel the lord talking to me too and he's just like you need to make this video because I once was asking those questions as well because I lived in a world where I wanted to get into my faith. I wanted to know the Lord, but I had zero clue how. And I knew when I needed to make this podcast, someone like DM me and they're like, hey, um, how do I buy a membership to my church? And I'm like, okay, I was kind of in the same boat. You have no idea what goes into getting in your faith. Like you have all these misconceptions if you weren't raised in the church. I was not raised in the church. So I completely understand all these questions that you guys have and you want to have it. You have the fire to learn the Lord and want to be closer to him. So today we're going to get into all of that because I wish someone would have helped me through that in the beginning because I was just so clueless. So, I mean, as we start with all these episodes, I kind of always go through my past experiences with like this subject because I feel as though it helps you guys understand that we all start somewhere. We didn't start besties with the Lord. You know, like we weren't all like in the beginning, like, yeah, like I know everything. Because when I tell you, all I knew was that Jesus died on the cross. I promise. Like I knew nothing. I felt so dumb coming into my faith. But I was at such a desperate time when I came into my faith that I honestly didn't even care how unknowledgeable I was. So in the beginning, oh, and by the way, guys, we have a little friend here today. Hold on, I'm putting this on D&D. Every time I start a podcast, for some reason, everyone wants to text me. And when I promise, nobody ever talks to me. I swear. So we have a little guest here. As you can see, if you're watching the video, uh, Bella is just chilling i she came back with me to alabama and she's just been up my butt ever since so let's start from the beginning of my journey with the lord because as i said and i've touched about this on socials before that i did not grow up in the church and i mean like a christian church or i didn't even know anything my parents put me into catholic school And it was not like Catholic school every single day. It was only on Sundays. And it was just not not it. Like, it was really tough. And I know for now, if you guys didn't know, I'm a Christian. I became a Christian. I was not always a Christian, though. I was Catholic. And I would go to CCD. They called it CCD. I don't know what that stands for, to be completely honest. I went to CCD on Sundays until I was in sixth grade. And I kid you not, they just put us in the classroom and we did like crossword puzzles. Like I hated going because we didn't do anything. They literally just kept us in a classroom for an hour on a Sunday and then went home. Like we didn't even go in- into the church. And I remember vividly like our, I guess it would be like the teachers. They weren't nuns. Like we had nuns at the school, but they they weren't in the class like teaching us. It was like just people that would like volunteer. 
and they would just be like, oh, yeah, like, don't even bother opening the Bible. Like, you're not going to understand anything. So that was my impression on the Bible from when I was younger. I was just like, ah, I'm not going to know. I'm just going to please my parents on a Sunday because they wanted me to get married in a Catholic church. Like, my parents were not religious at all. They just wanted me to get married at a Catholic church. And just like everyone else that was attending these CCD classes, like, nobody actually was going for the right reasons. And that was to build a relationship with the Lord. They were just going to be like, okay, one day I can get married in a Catholic church. And now I'm never getting married in a Catholic church. I'm not even Catholic. I'm Christian. So all of that was just really interesting. And, you know, I'm from Pennsylvania. I lived in a small town called Bucks County. And honestly, religion is not a thing up north. It's really not. I try to find a church for my family and they live like close, I mean, in Bucks County. And I could not find a Christian church that I think that could help them learn the relationship that they should build with the Lord. Like, I've had people from my hometown asking me, like, hey, what is a church I can go to? I, I feel like I'm being called to go to a church. And I'm like, bro, I have no idea. Like, all the churches there are mostly Catholic, and they don't really help you build your relationship with the Lord in my eyes. And so I grew up in a town where the, the Lord was not present at all. And even my fiance, when he came to visit, he was just like, I feel that like these people just don't have the Lord at all. And not in a mean way, because we just didn't know any better. I really didn't know any better until um, I was at my breaking point. And that was when I moved to Miami. But I think I forget where I heard this. I don't even I had to look up a scripture to see if this is even true. But I heard that the Lord comes and tries to save you three times, like to make himself really known and draw you to him. And he comes like three times, I believe. That might be a whole lie. But that's what I heard from somebody. And I know I had felt, uh, I felt drawn to the Lord. Um, When I lived in Vegas, I had um, this feeling that I should go to the Lord. I bought a Bible off of Amazon, but it kind of just ended there. And I I remember I was exposed to Christianity when I moved to Vegas because um, the two people I was living with, their parents were both pastors. And I was just like, whoa, I never heard of any of this. Like, I I kid you not. I didn't know even when I was younger. I didn't even know if I was Catholic or Christian. Like, that's how much I did not know. So when I had heard them talk about being pastors, I was like, what is a pastor? Literally didn't know anything. And so I remember that week I bought a Bible and I showed the one mom or I had it in my room and she's like, where did you get this from? And I was like, oh, we're on Amazon. And she was just like, whoa, like, cool. But I tried to read it, was confused. And then I was like, oh, well, I remember in Catholic church, they told me, but never be able to understand. So what's the point? Also, we'll get into it later, but there's different versions of the Bible, which I didn't know. And at the time I had been buying King James, which is King James is like, one of the hardest ones it's also the most like what is it the most real to what was it's like the most non-touched but it's also the hardest to understand especially if you're new to your faith I don't recommend King James but we'll get into that but um when I was at my breaking point once like, two years later and I moved to Miami and I just really couldn't do it anymore I uh, get really into it in my testimony video I don't like to talk about it too much but when I was at my breaking point is when I found the Lord and I was like, God, I, I ordered another Bible, another King James Bible. And I brought it into the bathroom and I was like, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I want a relationship with you. I feel as though you're the only way that I can live my life in peace. I feel like you're the only way, period. And that, that's crazy that I was even able to say that because I didn't know anything like at all. Like. And I didn't even know that there's like one scripture that's like, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And I was just like, I didn't even know that. And I was stating scripture being like, you are the only way. You are the way to life. And I was saying things like that. And I didn't even know God himself. And that's just like, I found journal entries of me saying that. And I was just like, that is crazy that I was saying stuff like that. That was so parallel at the time. And I actually just found this a few days ago. And I was just like, this is absurd that. I even said something like this, um, and I have it in my Bible now. I keep it with me all the time because I'm just like, this is just shows that I was being called to come to home to the Lord and come home to his kingdom. So that was like um, 
pretty much summed up real quick my experience. I really didn't know anything. And that's my point of explaining to you guys. You don't have to know anything to start your relationship with the Lord. He wants you to come as you are. And that's what a lot of people get confused about is they're like, they think they need to get to this perfect person and then come to the Lord. But it's like, I promise you, even when you are following the Lord, I know the most perfect Christians, they're still not perfect because we're born into sin. We are never going to be perfect. The only person that was ever perfect was Jesus Christ himself. Okay, so if he was the only one that was perfect, I promise you coming as you are, that's what he wants. He wants you to come and feel welcome and be like, okay, he knows you're a project. He knows you're going to have to work on some things. And that's the point of finding the faith, your faith. And that's the point of the gospel. And I think that's a lot of the struggle that I'm having on social media with people coming at me 24 seven is like, you lived this past life and this and that. And later, as I said, we'll get into the gospel and everything. But that is the beauty of the gospel is it says, come as you are. God wants you to come with all of your problems, all of your stresses, all of your sins that you've had and done. He wants you to come all with that. And he's like, hey, I love you so much. And we're going to work on this. And you are going to become a better person. You're going to become a better Christian. Not that you're going to be perfect because that's completely impossible for us, not for Jesus Christ, but for us, that is completely impossible. But you can learn to be like the Lord. He'll know that you're searching and you're trying. Okay. so. That's kind of my little spiel before we get into this whole thing. Because a lot of people wanted to come at me with that. They're like, you aren't perfect. And I'm like, yeah, of course I'm not. I'm human. We all are. I'm not Jesus. I can never be perfect. None of us good, but we can try to be. And the Lord will know that. And when we're not perfect, he'll correct us. And we can just keep trying to please the Lord and be better. So as I was saying, I write down notes every single time. And I had to write down like 50 different notes because I was like, <coughs> I was just choked on the podcast. That really hurt. That hurted a lot. Whew. Okay. Back to life. Thank you, Lord. I didn't choke. And that's the beauty of doing all that. I just don't remember anything I was just saying. But, oh, yeah. I write a million notes because I'm like, I can't miss anything. I have to make sure everything is said and this and that. Like, I'm, I'm nuts. I have the memory of a peanut, too. I'm praying about that, though. I'm giving it to the Lord. Lord, please help me with my memory. Anyways. So a lot of you guys, the common question is like, girl, how do I begin? But it's not as complicated as you think. It really isn't. And the best way for you to look at it in building your relationship right from the beginning, I would say the first step. So let's just do all of this in steps. Because when I think of things in steps, it comes a lot easier. Because when you think of something as a whole grand scheme picture, okay, it seems really complicated. It seems like there are so many little areas to work. But realistically it's all in steps and he will hold your hand through all those steps and I think for me the first step was building my relationship with him and you're like you might ask well how do I build my relationship with the Lord think of it as a friendship the Lord is your best friend and I think you have to think of it as a friendship the Lord is your best friend okay so if you have a best friend how do you continue to keep building that friendship up and keep getting closer and stronger It's all with communication, right? So if you don't text your best friend for about two weeks, you're going to feel that on your friendship, okay? So like you're going to start to feel like, oh, you're not as close with them anymore. God is your friend. You talk to him as your friend and you go to him as your friend. Like you have that one friend. You're always like, oh yeah, like find that one friend that you go to with everything. Don't. You go to your friend, Jesus Christ. You go to the Lord. You don't go to all these other people first. And that's something that I had to learn is like when you have a situation, Go right to the Lord. Anytime, like you say, you're arguing with your your best your your best friend, your real life best friend. Go to the Lord. You're arguing with your boyfriend. Go to the Lord. You're arguing with your significant other. Go to the Lord. Don't go to them first. Go to the Lord, and I promise you, He'll give you start to give you clarity about things. If you just start going to Him about everything, like He you, you would with your best friend, He will be there and He'll be able to answer you. Maybe not verbally, but He'll give you a a feeling and that's something that I never knew because I'm like oh yeah the Lord said to me or like the Lord made me feel this and I'm like hold on how did how did the Lord make you feel this for me you will start if I start praying and I pray and I really get into my prayer and like say you're really having a hard time getting in your prayer 
for put that worship music on really focus and be like lord please help me get into this that mindset that i'm only thinking about you and you only lord i want that relationship with you and i need to be searching for you don't let any distractions any other random thoughts come into my mind i have never been able to have like mindfulness peace of mind where i am not thinking about a million different things at once until i started praying to the lord being like lord let me focus on you and only you right now and when you get into that mindset and you start praying and talking and talking and talking, you will start to have things revealed. Oh, wait, I didn't think of this this way. That's when you feel sometimes that the Lord is answering you because I'll start praying about a situation and something that I would never think on my, se- my own would come into my mind. Like, okay, for example, the other day I, I had this thought and I was like, oh my God, I'm so mad right now. I'm really angry. I'm just going to go to the Lord. I go to the Lord and I'm like, God, I'm just mad about this. Like, why is this Why is this happening? Why is it this? Like, And I'm just like, why do they do this to me? Why does this? Why is that? And then I started to have these little like feelings of, well, maybe it's because of this. Maybe it's because of that. Maybe, and it was things that I would have never like called myself out for. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like you hear things that you might not want to hear. There was things that were like, well, maybe you're just way too extra. Maybe you're just way too possessive. Maybe you're just way too this. And then I was like, ugh, like, why did I think that? But it's like, I wasn't thinking that. that. The Lord was putting that on my heart. And the more that you build that relationship with the Lord, the more he'll put things on your heart that maybe you're like, oh, I'm not that. But it's like, wait, okay, let's take a step back and realize that that's probably the Lord saying that and putting that on your heart, that maybe there's things in your life that you need to change. But that goes with growing your relationship with the Lord. And another thing that helps with building your relationship with the Lord, there's a few things that I think that are like the keys to getting that relationship with him. And I would say it's like the three things that are huge. Three keys to get into the kingdom of heaven. I'm joking. That's not true. I'm just saying the three things that I think helped me build my relationship with the Lord were prayer, reading the Bible, and worship music. When I tell you, Make those a part of your daily to-do because when I started making sure and placing time slots in my day to give those times to the Lord, my life changed for the better. I wake up in the morning and this was what I usually, what I did in the beginning, beginning was I would wake up in the morning, grab my journal and cast any stress that I had onto the Lord. All right, I'm casting all my A words onto you. I'm doing this, 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 and this. And if you guys don't know what A words is, go listen to my last (laughs) podcast episode. But I'm like, Lord, I'm casting all this onto you. I would start the day in prayer, play my worship music as I'm waking up. And then I spend the first like hour with the Lord. Don't go on your phone. Don't do any of that. You're not going to find the Lord there. You're going to find the Lord when you're praying to him, listening to worship music and doing all of that. And I did that every day. That was a part of the, the day that I blocked out for the Lord. And then midday, I would kind of come back to the Lord and just start praying a little bit. And you know what? Honestly, it was kind of easy for me. I lived alone at the time when I was really searching for the Lord. And I had a lot of alone time. So I was just constantly, instead of talking to myself in my head, I was talking to the Lord. And I'd be like, I would be like, God, I don't know what to do right now. Should I do this, this, this? And I would just go to the Lord for literally everything. And I was talking to my fiance's brother and he was just like, we were talking about moving and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, like, I don't know what to do about like moving and this and that, like what moving company I should go to or it was something dumb. And he was like, literally pray about everything. Pray about everything that you're going to do. Pray about everything, every little decision. If I want to go to get coffee first or go to Target first, like, pray about it. Pray about everything. Go to the Lord with literally everything because he will guide you in the way that you're supposed to go. And it's like, why would you not want to go to the Lord when the Lord will guide you specifically in the right way. I'm not going to make my own decision. I'm going to make let the Lord make my decisions because I don't know what's best, but he does. And he's my bestie. He's my best friend, the Lord. Love him. Love that, love that man. Love that Jesus. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, setting those daily to-dos will help strengthen that relationship because it's like you're you're strengthening it and continuing. And also a huge thing with the worship part is – Worship music is so huge to me. I actually don't really ever listen to secular music anymore at all. Um, the only time that I ever listen to secular music is if it's on TikTok and I'm just scrolling. And I don't even listen to the bad ones. Like some of those Doja Cat songs, girl, I scroll real quick. I'm like, oh, ah, it's like a jump scare. But that's really the only time that I ever listen to secular music. And any other time, it's worship music. I know this might be TMI for my fiance, and I'm really sorry. Um, but we all have specific times where we feel closest to the Lord. 
Um, when the Lord, you have to kind of find what that is for you because I know sometimes when I'm having a really hard day or I'm struggling, where I feel the most connected with the Lord is obviously with worship music. That's like the first main thing that a lot of people feel connected to him is when you're listening to worship music. And for me, listening to worship music in the car is where I feel his presence and feel him speaking to me the most. So sometimes if I'm having a hard time, I go right into my car, put that worship music on, even if I'm just sitting in the driveway and I'm just like praying to him, talking to him, going over things with him and like just really trying to connect with the Lord. And from my fiance, see, we don't feel the Lord in the same places. He feels his connection with the Lord in the shower. So he'll go in the shower and pray and do what he needs to do, listen to his worship music. So find that place that makes you feel the closest with the Lord. Because I feel the responses from the Lord when I'm in the car. My fiance feels it when he's in the shower. You could feel it anywhere. You could feel it when you're like going on a run. Maybe it's on a run or at the gym or doing something that you feel the Lord when you're going through that hard time, that will build your and strengthen your relationship. Say you don't even need to go to him and you're not in the stressed out mood or you're having a bad day. You just want to talk with the Lord. Go to that spot. If I just want to talk to him and build my relationship with him, I go in that car. Super easy. But find that place that you feel good. And and, and that's going to take time. It's going to take time of like realizing, okay, I do feel the Lord a lot when I'm running or I feel the Lord a lot. So try different things. Don't just be like, oh, well, Gabby feels the Lord in the car, so I'm going to go in the car and listen to worship music. Do your thing that you feel called to and where you feel the most, I guess, peace with the Lord and you feel the most, and like, you feel like your mind is only focused on him. Go to that spot. A lot of you guys, so the one thing I was saying, like, in the car and I pray, the one thing that you guys were, like, coming to me about was, how do I pray? How do I pray? And I'm like, guys, the best example and the best advice I could give there is a worship song. Sorry, guys. <laughs> With all this worship music. I love worship music so much. It's like so good. But the best worship music that, or the, I guess the, I can't speak half the time. I'm sorry, guys. Bear with me. This podcast is a, a work in progress. But the best song that I think describes on exactly step by step on how to pray to the Lord is Talking to Jesus. It's by Brandon Lake. Listen to it. And he says, don't overcomplicate it. Because God, it says in the Bible, come to me as you are. So that means don't put on this fake persona. Don't come to him being like, thou shy he. Like, no, just come to him and be like, hey, God, um, I love you. Like, I'm struggling with this and this is what I need help with. Even that, a short prayer, he knows it's coming from your heart. If it's coming from your heart, that's the perfect prayer. The perfect prayer comes from your heart. And we're all created in the Lord's eyes. Okay, so. He's not going to be like, oh, I don't like the way she said this or like she's not formal enough. She's not this or he's not formal enough or whatever. You have to come to the Lord in prayer as you are because he he created you. You're his creation. He knows your personality more than anyone else in this entire world. So come to him with the personality that he gifted you. If that's just like being straight up and be like, God, I don't know what's going on right now. Perfect. If you want to have this long, thoughtful message to him and be like, God, I don't know. I, I'm struggling. And you have like an hour long prayer. If that's how you feel, do that. But he wants you to come as you are. He doesn't want you to change and manipulate the way you are to try to come to him as this perfect person. Like, just come to him as you would as a friend. Just like you would go to your friend as with a situation or a problem that you might need insight on. Like go to him just like that. Don't overcomplicate the prayer. The more that you overcomplicate the prayer, the more that it's just like you're going to feel flustered and frustrated and it's like you can't build a relationship with somebody when you're putting on a fake face. You know what I'm saying? Think about all the times when you go into a friend group and you try to put on this fake personality. Those relationships are a lot harder to maintain and to continue because you're not being your genuine self, just like as your relationship would be with the Lord because you're going to get tired and be like, this isn't who I am. I'm not being who I am when I'm praying to him. Praying to him is talking to him. So be who you are as a friend to the Lord and just talk to him. Don't overcomplicate your prayer. And another thing into like the how to begin is the Bible is so important. I don't hear enough people talk about this and it really frustrates me is be careful of what translation you are reading in the Bible. And I'm saying this because I didn't know this for the longest time. Thankfully, I never had this Bible situation happen to me, but I've had to help a lot of people with this. And they were just like, I did not know that. And 
depending on the Bible that you read is so important. Okay, so for a fact, I know that ESV and King James are really good to read. They're safe to read, good. But the one that is like absolute no-no is NIV because they manipulate and take out scriptures that are super, super important. So if you are beginning your walk with the Lord, be so careful with what Bible you are reading because it is actually a sin to read. (coughs) Sorry. It's actually a sin to read a Bible that has stuff taken out of it, scriptures manipulated, because the Lord wants us to read almost identical to what he's saying. Because I know King James is really hard to read. And trust me, I get it. Um, But ESV is what I read. It's pretty easy to understand. Sometimes I'll go into the Bible app and I look at different translations. Um, But if you look up on the web, on the web, why did I use that word? (laughs) But if you look up on the web, like, and you see stuff and like, say like, what um, translations are the best? Do that too. But I know for a fact ESV and King James are good. But, you know, I just be super careful because you don't want to be reading the wrong word. You want to be reading the word that the Lord wants us to know. So if you're reading stuff that has manipulated scripture and taken out scriptures, be so careful. I wouldn't continue reading that. And if you're like, hey, money's an issue for me and I I can't go and buy a new Bible, totally get that. That's totally fine. A lot of questions that I get usually on TikTok because I do those like slide videos of like the Bible. um, People are like, what is that? What app is that? That app is called just Bible and you can literally change the translation to so many different ones. And... You know how I do those like slide videos on TikTok? If you don't know my TikTok, whatever, (laughs) follow me on TikTok. But um, I do those like slide videos. And a lot of the time I do those where it's like God said or like someone said this and then I slide over and it shows a scripture that supports the beginning. And a lot of people are like, where is that from? What app is that? And that is literally the Bible app. You can just go on to the Bible app and there's so many translations you can choose and pick from. Usually mine's ESV and I will just take a screenshot and put it on a TikTok and you can like change your highlighting colors. So like usually I'll put it on pink. That's why I think a lot of you guys like it. Honestly, I love it. It's such a good app. And when I'm reading the Bible, I like to go back and forth and see like different translations because sometimes if I'm kind of confused as what the Bible is trying to say, sometimes a different translation will help. And another thing that helps with reading the Bible is getting a message Bible. It's in my Amazon storefront. It's really big. It's like pink. Uh, it's huge. You will see I have this Bible that I bring with me everywhere. I bring it to church. I bring it on flights. I bring it everywhere. This is ESV. This is not a message Bible though. Super just easy translations. Um, This is what I usually read and take notes on. But if I'm confused and I'm really getting into my Bible study that night or day or whatever, um, I will pull out the message Bible and it gives you messages of like kind of what's going on in the Bible. Sometimes it's hard to understand. But I will depend on that a lot. And another thing you can do too is, which honestly you should do before you read the Bible ever, is pray. I pray before I read because I'm like, Holy Spirit, please reveal to me what you want me to understand and help me and guide me through these passages, Lord. I want to be able to understand and know you. Give me the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to interpret what you want me to know and whatever. Whatever you feel like is on your heart to say to the Lord, And I really suggest, though, that you connect with the Holy Spirit and be like, Holy Spirit, help guide me in this and show me and reveal to me things that I didn't know before. That's something that I always say in my prayer before reading. But praying before reading is so important because the Lord will help you through the Bible. And if you don't understand and you still have prayed over it, I just move on. I'm like, maybe the Lord doesn't want me to understand that. And sometimes I'll go back to it and I completely understand. It's just like the Holy Spirit doesn't want that to be revealed to you yet. And that's totally fine. He just sometimes maybe wants you to go read something else first. And that has happened to me so many times where there was something that I needed to read. And then I was reading something else, didn't understand. So I flipped to another thing and it was exactly what I was searching for. So super cool that the Holy Spirit works in such cool ways. But um, I'm sorry if I'm talking fast, too, because there's just so much to cover when building a relationship with the Lord. It's so important. But anyways, moving on is connecting with people in the church community and in like Christianity community. Thankfully, I'm on TikTok and I can find people that are in the Christian community. I made amazing friends through the Christian community. But 
having that sense of community whether that's at your church or finding people online be careful please also i want to preface there is a few fake accounts coming out about me and they're like i don't know who they are but they're like trying to like have people come to a live concert guys i'm not having a live concert i don't sing um, but i just want to make sure you guys are being safe and careful because i just want you guys to be super careful um but anyways back to what i was saying um i only have one account (laughs) but i want to say that build your community up because when you have people in the community and they're following the lord and they have the same things in mind as you when they're building their connections is it will hold you accountable in so many ways and going to church i know can be stressful i started going to church in at vu in miami and a lot of people were nervous um about going to church for the first time i had a lot of people coming to me being like how do i go to church do i buy my membership you don't need to buy a membership i'll say that now at any church you don't need to buy a membership you just show up and i know sometimes it seems scary to go by yourself and i started going to church by myself i had no one to go with so i would just go every sunday alone and it was a process so like i didn't just become this good christian all of a sudden in the beginning of when i was finding the lord there was one night i remember i didn't get home from the club until five in the morning and then i went to church at eight i tell you 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 start somewhere but you don't end where you started that's the whole point of the gospel and just know that give yourself time and i was going to church alone totally fine if you feel like you don't have anyone to go with and you want to go to the church and you want to go do these things don't feel like you can't go because you don't have someone to go with you'll meet friends everyone there is usually so welcoming and so sweet especially if you're in the miami fort lauderdale area i highly recommend vu because it was such a perfect place for me to start it's a non-denominational christian church perfect i loved it so much it was everything that i needed and more in starting my journey and everyone there was just so kind and so welcoming and i do miss pastor rich and don tree they were amazing and they really helped me understand the lord when i was a fetus in my journey and now i moved to alabama and i'm going to a pentecostal church where i feel as though i've been called to go by the lord i felt like i needed to deepen my faith and get into the really deep things that a lot of people don't want to talk about but that could be a whole other episode i'm not going to get into that today but you know finding a church that fits you in the beginning is so per is so important finding that place where you can feel that sense of community feel that type of connection you need the connection especially in your early faith because i know from me coming from not knowing anything i didn't know uh, that drinking was a sin i didn't know that there were certain things that were not allowed but i was looking to other people to guide me because i didn't know anything so building your relationship with other people so important because you can ask them questions and do all of that and another thing that is helpful too and as i said you go to the lord with everything every situation every problem all of that but after i go to the lord and i sometimes just still feel i'm like okay let me just make sure maybe i just need a little more insight of like something okay so i'm gonna say maybe i need a little more insight on something so i go to a friend that has the lord in their heart so they can bring me back to the word because if you're going go to the lord first Then go to a friend that has the Lord in their heart and that is being led by the Lord and is in their word. And I go to them and I say, hey, bring me back to the Lord. Bring me a scripture. Guide me back to where I can have some common ground and some peace. And usually every time I go to somebody that has the Lord in their heart and I come to them with a situation, they bring me right back to the word and it helps me. And it's like everything that I could have felt like I feel way better going to them I feel like I just didn't explain that right that's what I'm saying is like go to the Lord and then when you're done and you still don't feel that way and the the more that you build the relationship though with the Lord the less that you'll feel the need to go to other people but when you're in your early faith go to the Lord and sometimes you might not feel like you got an answer and you may not feel like you got that aha moment and so I would go to a friend that's way farther in their faith that is in the Lord word more than maybe any of my other friends i would go to them and ask them hey 
What do you think about the situation? And they will always bring you back the Lord. That's why it's so important to have people in your life that are chasing the Lord as well, because they will bring you back to his word and bring you back to what he wants for you. And it's such a good feeling because sometimes it's everything and more that you needed to hear from your friend. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord will make that known. He'll help you and make you understand your situation sometimes from other people. So connections are huge. But another thing that I want to talk about is this is super important in your early ages of your faith. And that is you have to be okay with knowing that there's going to be many trials and tribulations. And especially after you get baptized, I went through a really hard time with um, some spiritual warfare and things like that after my baptism. But especially in the beginning, when you're kind of teetering and learning about the Lord and figuring things out, things are going to come your way that are going to make you feel like you need to go back to your normal life, back to the worldly life, which I was so lost and confused that I just didn't even care. I was just like, how much worse can things get? I know God has got me. So I'm just going to keep following him, even though there's things that just keep happening that are even worse. But I knew that God was cleaning house. And in the beginning, it is going to feel like your life is falling apart. I promise. I know that sounds really scary and it's hard in the beginning of your faith, but it's all about steps. And the more that you start to surrender to him, the more things that might start to feel like they're collapsing, but it's not collapsing. It's just God rearranging. So when I gave my life to the Lord fully and I let him take everything, because you can't expect a God plan to happen when he can't even touch your life. You know what I'm saying? You're like holding on to this thing and you're like, God, can you please change this? And he's like, well, I can't even touch it. So how can I change any of that when you're not even giving it to me? Okay. So in the beginning, I was just building my relationship with the Lord, building my relationship with the Lord. And then I started to slowly surrender things. So I surrendered my relationship. He cleared it out and it was really hard, but I knew he was in charge. I gave him my company and he got rid of it. And I knew he was in charge. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. This is what the Lord wants. And at the time, this was all happening all by one by one. And this happened in like the course of two months. So like everything was just, and it was so hard. And like, yeah, it would have been super easy to go back and be like, you know what? Let me take all that stuff back and just sit in the emptiness that I felt. But I knew that God was just cleaning house to prepare me for the things that he had for me. If you hold on to the things that are keeping you in that worldly life and not happy, you are going to continue to stay in that. You can't hold on to those things and follow God. Because if you fully surrender your life to the Lord, he's going to remove things that were not from him, that wasn't his plan. But he's going to remove them in order to set you up for his plan, okay? So I know it might seem hard in the beginning of your faith because you feel like you're losing everything, but I promise you, you're losing those things to gain so much more than what you could have ever imagined. I could have never imagined that God would have put me here right now. And I'm so grateful that I I trusted in him and I trusted the Lord and I, I let him have the things that I didn't want to surrender for the longest time, but I surrendered them and he gave me so much more than I could have ever dreamed of. So in the beginning, it will be hard, but you have to just have that faith and that trust in him because he has something planned for you. And sometimes when you're coming into your faith, you have a lot of things that were from the enemy that God is going to just get rid of once you fully surrender it all to him. And I went to him for all of this. I prayed to him, God, am I supposed to be in this? Am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be with this person? Am I supposed to have this company? Am I supposed to have this and that? And he answered me real quick. The one prayer that the Lord loves to answer super quickly, and this is like, I feel like it's a joke on social media too. The one prayer that the Lord loves to answer so quick usually within like 24 hours or 48 hours is god is this person supposed to be in my life if not remove them oh my goodness the amount of times that i heard and he's done in my life too that he's removed people like this he don't care he's like oh you want to know here you go that's your answer he does not play with that prayer Uh uh-uh he answers that prayer real quick but when you start to surrender these things to him he will answer trust when they're not from him and they're from the enemy, he will answer that real quick. Promise. And a lot of the time that I felt that answer was depending if I felt peace or I felt sickness over it. There was one situation, I'm not going to talk about it, but there was one situation in particular that I was like, Lord, if I'm supposed to be in this right now, like, let me know. 
the amount of uncomfortableness that I felt during that prayer, the more and more I prayed and asked about it in that specific prayer, the more uneasy, the more awful I felt. And I was just like, that was a Lord turning my stomach being like, nope, this isn't for you. And then he made it happen because I kept trying to fight that feeling. And then he removed it himself. He was like, nope, you didn't listen to me when I gave you that discern, this discernment. So now I'm just going to do it myself. And he, he did it for sure. Um, Another thing that I wrote, and I'm just going to read this because I, it's so true, is like the enemy will make you feel like building a relationship with him is so complicated. And relationship with him, meaning the Lord, uh, he will make it feel like it is so difficult. It's so many rules and this and that. And like, I promise you, when you start building that friendship with him, the Lord is going to put discernment. He's going to put things on your heart and make you and guide you in certain ways. There were certain things that I would have never thought of giving up. But I did because the Lord put it on my heart a lot. And then I thought about it and did a lot of prayer about it. And then I was like, whoa, I would have never came to that conclusion on my own. Or I would have never thought of giving that certain specific thing up if it wasn't for the Lord. So just know that it's in steps. It's not like you have to change overnight. Okay. Like obviously people change really quickly when the Lord comes into their life. But it's all about steps and learning. And God will correct you and be like, hey, don't do that. But like maybe move around here. Do this a little bit better. And he'll put that on your heart, but it's all going to be in step. He's not going to overwhelm you with a million worse things all at once. I mean, maybe he will. You don't know. You can never dictate what he's going to do. You never know. But if you know at the end of the day, all that's important is building your relationship and getting closer to the Lord. That's all that matters. He searches your heart more than anything. So just know that, that he he knows your heart. He knows that you're searching. And he's going to let things happen when they're supposed to happen because it's at God's speed not your speed at god's speed okay and the one thing is like you have to have the trust in the lord you have to trust him i know sometimes it's hard but you have to just trust him that's such a big thing in the beginning of your faith because sometimes you want to just control and be in control and it makes you feel safe but just because you're in control doesn't mean that's what's best because I used to, in the beginning, struggle with being like giving things to the Lord and being like, Lord, you can have it. Just you deal with it. But when you want to start to micromanage your life and control things and not let God control them, it's almost as if you're saying to the Lord, like, I trust myself more than I trust you. So don't touch any of this. I got myself. I don't really trust you as much, though. That's basically what you're saying to the Lord when you try to control everything. If you just let the Lord have everything and you surrender everything to him, he can start to work out his God plan for you. But if you are holding on to things and being like, Lord, I trust me more than I trust you, then he's not going to be able to do nothing with your life. You're going to be staying in that stagnant situation for a long time until you fully surrender it all. And I know it's hard, but it's all in steps, okay? Okay, and the last thing that I really want to touch on before we start getting to the questions that you guys have is the gospel. Ooh, I just hit that real hard. The gospel is so important. Okay, so in the beginning of your walk with the Lord, you are going to face a lot of trials and tribulations. I told you the enemy is going to be in your ear a lot. Okay, you have to start to learn what is God's voice and what is the enemy's voice. And we can do a whole episode on that if you guys really want me to um, of like knowing God's voice versus the enemy. Um, because I'm, I've been still learning about that. It's kind of also one of the reasons why I went on another fast. And um, I got off of it the day I moved here, or no, like a few days after I moved to Alabama. And it was about like being filled with the Holy Spirit and finding what the Lord's voice is. And I'm still struggling with that. Sometimes it's a little harder, but I've learned so much since then. But the enemy will come into your life a lot and be like, you've sinned so much. You did it. Like the amount of comments that I get on my socials being like, you can't for you did this. You can't just turn it to the Lord after you went and did all that. It's like, okay, I think, uh, girl, my my dog Bella keeps yawning like crazy, crazy girl. But the gospel, I think a lot of people don't know the gospel, and the amount of times that I almost let those kind of things like make me second guess myself. Not that like I almost turned away from the Lord, but I was like, am I too far? No. That's the whole point of the gospel. So don't ever let anybody try to hold your past above you or be like, oh, you're not drinking anymore. But remember when you used to go out and party? Like, you can't just do that anymore. You can't just not 
do that. I still did that. The Lord's not going to forgive you. That is the whole point of the gospel is you turn into a different person for the better when you meet the Lord. And don't let anyone hold that above your head because if you know the gospel, you know that all that is just gibberish. So really just try to get into the gospel. A good one to start with is Matthew and you will understand what the gospel is about. And when people say stuff to you and try to hold your past against you, you will understand that you know the gospel and you know what the word is and they just don't. And if they say stuff to you like that, try to hit them back with the gospel. Be like, do you not, have you never read the gospel? Like you don't have to be mean about it. That'll go down here, baby. Yes, girl. Um, You don't need to be mean about it. What I do usually if someone's like, oh, you can't just turn to the Lord and this and that. And I'm like, question, do you know what the gospel is? And they'll be like, I've heard of it, like, or whatever, whatever they say back. But the gospel is all about coming as you are, and God will form you into his creation and help you and guide you and do everything. Bella just needs to sit on top of me, of course. But he will guide you, okay? That's the whole point of the gospel is changing you from the sinful life that you were living and then changing for the Lord and becoming a better person. That is the point of the gospel. So if anybody tries to hold that above your head, Absolutely not, because they just don't know the gospel. Don't let that get into your head at all. So we're going to get into some questions because I know a lot of you guys had so many questions about it. So let's go to the handy dandy Instagram page and see what you guys have written. You guys have been very adamant on Instagram. So someone said to me, first question is, where to start in the Bible? I just got it and I have no clue where to begin. Kind of felt the same way. Um... In the beginning, I advise starting out with Matthew. That's where I really understood the most. The New Testament is going to be easier for you to understand than the Old Testament. The Old Testament, I still have a rocky time with. But if you just really focus on the New Testament and what the book of Matthew says, it'll be easier for you to understand. And the rest, I think, starting with the New Testament, specifically Matthew. And then after Matthew, if you feel like you want to keep reading in the New Testament, I highly recommend But I think starting with the short, short books, there's one like Habakkuk is like two pages. Start by finishing all of the the little ones, like the little books in the Bible, and that will help too. So New Testament though, a lot easier. And then start to get into the Old Testament because New Testament will help you understand the ways of the Bible first, but also helps with like what version you're reading. So this is something that I got a lot was, what if you stayed away and want to come back to God, but you don't know how? Just start seeking him the ways that I've explained. There's people leave the Lord, they they rebel from the Lord, and then they want to come back. But it's like, you can always come back. You can always do those things. But like, I don't, obviously, I don't advise you to go and leave the Lord. <laughs> I'm saying you can always come back to the Lord and do it this way. And it's perfect. Like, there is no guide but this is what helped me in my experience is everything that I explained but don't ever think that you just because you left the Lord doesn't mean you can't come back so another question is when will he answer my prayers but sometimes so in the beginning when I was first like finding the Lord and I was asking him things he was moving things really quickly and he was answering my prayers but sometimes God will answer your prayers for two reasons I feel like is one because he's in the middle of working something out and he's trying to show you something else right now or sometimes no answer is an answer so it's like if he's not answering a certain prayer then maybe that is the answer and so someone asked i'm just going to clarify it again because i can't stress about how important this question is is what is the best bible version to get and i can't express it more than enough I know for a fact, so this is what I know for a fact. I know there's other Bibles out there that are good too, but I know for a fact, and I can be sure about it, is King James and ESV. Absolutely not NIV at all. They remove things. Things are manipulated. You need to read the purest version of the Bible, and those ones I know is pretty good. Um, So this is actually something that um, we kind of learned about in church yesterday was revelations and it's scary. Revelations is really scary. If you're starting the Bible, don't read Revelations yet. Learn about the Bible first. But someone said they're dealing with emotions of feeling let, like they're letting down God and they're worrying about their afterlife. But God searches your heart. If he knows you're truly trying to build a relationship with him and you're living a true Christian life and you're, he knows your heart, he searches your heart and he knows what you're trying to do. If he knows that, 
then that's all that matters and you're trying to live your best life and you're trying to change things if you feel like discernment about something you feel like the lord like kind of came to you and was not happy about you happy with you about something and it's like okay change it and then move on like he knows you're trying to work on it that's all that matters someone said how do you get motivated to read the bible i think it's like if you just really want to know knowledge over something i really just want to know i'm curious about so much so i just want to keep reading but in the beginning it wasn't always like that for me um but i think the closer that you try to build your relationship with the lord the more that you're going to be curious about more and i also think that giving yourself a scripture a day at least like sometimes the bible app will give you a daily scripture i'll go to that scripture and read it and then i'll say like okay i read that scripture and then i go to the whole chapter and then i go to the whole book and i start reading it so i think like just starting it that way but just limit yourself to one scripture a day in the beginning and then you can slowly start to increase it and like understand more so i think that is like the perfect way fellas can we change i'm gonna end with this one um Okay, there's two more I'm going to answer. Why do bad things happen if God wants the best for you? Sometimes God shows us lessons in really strange ways. And I completely understand that sometimes it feels like, why God? That feeling. But you learn so much, so much through those kinds of situations with the Lord. And the amount of times that I felt the Lord so strong in my life were when things that were really bad were happening. And I was just like, why God? That's when I felt his presence the most. And that's when I learned the most about the Lord. That's when I got the closest to the Lord. And that's what helped strengthen my relationship with him. And like, honestly, probably saved me from a lot worse situations in the future. So try to look at it as learning lessons and a opportunity to get closer to the Lord. Because I know it's so easy to be like, why God? But it's like, think about like, actually, why God? Why did you do this? Let's think about the real lessons that I learned from this situation. And the last question I want to answer is, how do you let go of your old self and life? I think the closer that you get to the Lord, the easier it is going to be able to just allow those things to dissipate. And like, I remember I was going out in the beginning of my relationship with the Lord. Like I was going out and partying and this and that. But the more closer to the Lord that I got, I would feel that pull like, eh, I don't really want to do that. Like, the desires start to go away. So really just focus on building that foundation and that relationship with the Lord that he will start to put that on your heart and be like, eh, I don't really want that anymore. The desires start to go away the closer that you get. But I hope this, oh my gosh, my neck just cracked like crazy. But I hope this episode helped you guys. I know that there was so many questions from you guys asking me questions about building your relationship with the Lord. And I tried to answer all of them, but maybe we can do a part two one day if you feel like I didn't answer some things and we can do some more about that. But I love you guys so much. I will see you guys next Monday and I love you and I hope you have an amazing week. And yeah, I love you. Bye.